welcome, welcome, welcome to this episode of the Inclusive Networker Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Ramona, and who am I calling into conversation today? Well, it is Toby Milden. I am so excited to have him as part of the podcast. And let me tell you a little bit about him. Toby Milden is a diversity and inclusion architect and founder of Milden, a consultancy and advisory business. Toby works with businesses to re-engineer processes and systems to minimize the impact of bias and build a culture of inclusion. Prior to setting up his business, Toby worked as an in-house diversity and inclusion manager at the BBC and Deloitte. So Toby, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Inclusive Networker. Thanks, Ramona. It's uh, lovely to be here. Thank you. Yes. And so um, I'll open it up like I open up with everybody and just uh, tell me about your lens. What is your lens? How did you get to where you are today? Um, so you might tell from my accent that I'm British. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a white man. I uh, have a physical disability that I was born with. Um, and I, I'm also a gay man. And mm -hmm. one of the things I I, I quite like to talk about with people is the intersectionality of our different identities and characteristics and mm. how they give us a, a unique lens on on the world through that lived experience. Awesome. So, you know, I think that this is so important and it's such a, a great conversation for network marketers specifically, um, particularly with the uh, disability piece, because we don't get a lot of training with that. We're, we're not told, you know, we think, oh, this business is online. There's nothing that I have to think about. We're going to be inclusive of people that have disabilities. And really, we're not. There's so many different things that we need to think about. And so um, I'd, I'd love to just open up the conversation there and really start to think about what are the things when we're talking about online business specifically that we need to start to think about when we're trying to be inclusive of people with disability? Yeah, the, the first thing that lots of people do is they, they fall into the trap of thinking that disability is it's really limited to people like me, as in mm -hmm. people in people in wheelchairs. But that's good. The world yeah. of disability is so diverse. Um, there are so many disabilities and impairments yeah. out there. So I think first of all, marketeers need to think broadly. Um, one of the first things I think they really need to think about is how disability is defined. And there's kind of two two lenses really. There's there's the medical model of the disability, which basically says that there's something wrong with you. You need fixing somehow. There, there's mm. some underlying condition that needs addressing. Whereas the social model of disability, which is what we prefer to talk about really, says that people are disabled by barriers that are created in society. And these mm. can be physical barriers, they could be procedural barriers, or they can be attitudinal barriers. And if we want to be inclusive, then we need to identify and dismantle these barriers. Okay, so that is that is an amazing point to start with, is how do we even define disability? And so when give us some examples of, I, I think people more so think about the medical disability, right? And so um, give us some examples of medical disability, but also the social disability that you're talking about. Yes, yeah, so if we take me, for example, I, I was born with a rare genetic neuromuscular disability, which is called spinal muscular atrophy. And the, the medical model of, of looking at it would be to say that, you know, I have this underlying genetic disability. Um, I'm a wheelchair user and I need medical interventions to, to cure me somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and whilst there's an element of truth to that, it, whilst I have benefited from healthcare and there is a healthcare need, if I want to go out to the restaurant with my partner, for example, and I can't get into the restaurant because there's steps and there's no ramp or elevator, um, it's not the fact that I've got this underlying disability. It's the fact that there's no ramp or elevator provided mm -hmm. in order to get to, into the restaurant that's actually mm -hmm. disabling me, that's creating that barrier. So if we think about it in terms of like the world of marketing, um, an e-commerce um, company, for example, they might be creating barriers by making by by their checkout process not being accessible. Okay. Um, for somebody who say can't see or they're blind because mm -hmm. their maybe their website doesn't work with assistive technology. So that mm -hmm. means that somebody who's blind or can't see um, is not able to complete the checkout process and buy a product 
online. So that's an example of how a, a digital barrier could be created. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, when we're thinking about building our teams and we're building the, the systems, um, specifically, you know, in network marketing, we have um, companies that we work with, we have online sales. And, and what you just gave us an example of is the checkout process is something that the, the overall company can be aware of. But how do we then move into the team culture to make because we, you know, kind of yield to the, the company with the checkout process and, and, and those types of things. But when we're thinking about when we're building the team, when we're doing presentations for people, when we're um, building the team and building the culture around inclusion within the team, what are some tips and things that we can be thinking about and things that we can address with, within uh, inclusion or disability? Yeah, it's a really good question because I think the, the place to start is for the team to probably invest in its own learning and mm -hmm. awareness and just become a lot more mindful about difference and diversity and some of the challenges that people might have when engaging with your product or service, um, maybe even some of the stereotypes that we're perpetuating and, and really give the team confidence to be able to, to call out um, inequity when they spot it. So mm -hmm. if you imagine you've got a team, maybe they're brainstorming a, a new marketing campaign. There might be somebody on the team that goes, hang on a minute, you know what? We've got a lack of visual uh, diversity in this campaign. For, it, for example, there's nobody who's visibly disabled as part of the campaign. So mm -hmm. how, how do you then equip that person with the confidence to be able to speak up and, and call that out to their colleagues um, mm -hmm. and, and really become aware of their blind spots? So w when we're investing in that learning, what are some things that you suggest that we do? Or are there specific resources? Um, because, you know, we think about, oh, there are so many different things to learn about race and ethnicity. There's so many different things to learn about these different diversity categories. But when you think about disability specifically, where are some places that, that we can go and what do we need to start? Yeah, so one thing I teach my clients is um, lean back, lean forwards and jump in mentoring. So okay. lean back mentoring is where you uh, listen or watch something in the comfort of your home. So you could watch a YouTube video, you could uh, listen to a podcast, you could read a blog post or online article or something. It's, it, it's something very passive that you could do in the comfort of your own home on the sofa. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the lean back experience. Um, the lean forward experience is where you actively connect with and engage with people that you wouldn't normally connect with. We, we all have this similarity bias being human beings. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we find comfort in just hanging out with people that are like ourselves. Mm -hmm. But what that ends up leading to is we create in-groups and out-groups unintentionally. And we, we over-appreciate the skills and abilities of people in our in our in-group. And we, mm -hmm. then we might undermine or overlook the skills and abilities of people in our out-group. So the, the Lean Forwards experience is really about connecting with people that you wouldn't ordinarily connect with. And that could be actively seeking out networking opportunities. Um, or, for example, if your company has an employee resource group, go along to events that they organize that you might not normally attend. Mm -hmm. Then the, the jump forwards or the jump in experience is where you proactively um, build a relationship with somebody, mentor them and sponsor them. So it might be that you you identify or you work with somebody who has a disability and you you know you act as a, a mentor or a, a sponsor or even or do reverse mentoring that would be my main recommendation so mm -hmm. whilst you can mentor them they can mentor you about what it what it's like to, to live with a disability mm -hmm. and then uh how do we translate the things that we've learned because i think you know when i talk about diversity equity and inclusion i often say you're getting these ideas from people. Now you've done this learning, you've done the interaction with these other people. Um, and then a lot of times it just falls there. And so what is the best thing for us to do to actually put it in action? The things that we've learned, especially that last piece, the jumping in when we talk to somebody and we've done this bi-directional mentoring yep. with a person that has a disability. How do we actually put it in play and make sure that we do something about it. 
this really is about taking personal responsibility and accountability and mm -hmm. setting yourself a commitment that you will write down the actions that you want to take and then actually do them and it's it's even handy if you can if you can get yourself an accountability buddy and mm -hmm. if you if you do go into the the jump in the, the jump in experience and you get yourself a reverse mentor then um you can hold each other accountable mm -hmm. yes okay so as we're I, I have this framework that I use, it's called ROAR. And when we talk about ROAR, um, one of the reasons I use it is because I want people to ROAR and speak up for uh, diversity, equity and inclusion. But it also stands for recruitment, onboarding, the activity that you have within your business and retention. So I want to yeah. talk about some things within that. And so when we're thinking of recruitment and we're thinking about, uh, you already said some things about marketing, the materials that will we show uh, people with disability, but are there other things that you can think of that would be tips when we're thinking about recruitment specifically uh, for people with disability? Yeah, I mean, there's so many things that you can mm -hmm. do. Um, and um I'll just give you a flavor of some of the, the things. So, I mean, one of the things that we that we do, me and my team, is that we, we will go in and we will assess and we will audit how accessible and inclusive a recruitment process is for mm -hmm. clients and disabled talent. And um, the good news is that there are some pretty consistent themes and actions that organizations can take. Okay. Um, so if if the person listening to us right now is UK based, a good place to start is actually the disability confidence scheme that was mm -hmm. created by um, the Department for Work and Pensions over here in the UK. Um, it was developed and designed by disabled people um, and industry as a way of attracting and recruiting, retaining and developing disabled talent. Now, mm -hmm. um, I haven't tested this, so I don't know if it's accessible for anybody who's outside of the UK, but okay. I'm sure if somebody Googles it, they could they can probably download the, the guidance, which is really handy and it's free, um, which okay. is a, a bonus. Yes. Um, when it comes to attracting and retaining, I think, first of all, making sure that you, you visibly show and talk about disability in your in your career's marketing collateral. So if you're using images, show images that have got visibly disabled people in them. Um, as a note of caution, just avoid um, the kind of stock photography that you can download mm -hmm. from some websites because it's not completely authentic. So just, mm -hmm. just be careful with that. Um, in, the, in the copy that you're creating, talk about disability and inclusion as well. Make it very clear to people that they can talk to you about requesting workplace adjustments um, and kind of demonstrate to people the art of the possible as well, giving mm -hmm. case studies of maybe workplace adjustments that you've made for existing staff. So people feel a bit more confident about asking what they, they need um, mm. and what adjustments they need. And then I think there's almost like doing a bit of a technical audit of your recruitment process as well, just mm -hmm. to make sure that your systems work with assistive technology. So I've already mentioned uh, JAWS, for example, which is what um, people who are blind or visually impaired use uh, mm -hmm. online. Now, if your careers website does not work with this kind of assistive technology, then people might have difficulty applying to work for you. So yeah. it's worth just doing a technical audit of those systems. And so with network marketing, people don't normally apply. And so let, let's think about, um, so if a person is just, um, usually it's word of mouth or they're seeing someone on social media and they're coming in and they're, um, so we can have the, the different assistive technologies that are, especially we, we let's talk about onboarding because that's where people really start to get online and they're having to come yeah. into the team they're having to learn the processes and so we can add those assistive technologies especially into our onboarding as well yeah, yeah mm -hmm. definitely it, it so, cuts across any any system that's being used absolutely so as we're t thinking about onboarding then because i always use this phrase we recruit for diversity but we onboard for conformity right mm -hmm. so we're always <laughs> thinking about the fact that we on board for this one type of person that looks like us, that acts like us, and it's very difficult for other people who are are not 
that, that don't fit the mold, and I'm using quotation marks here, to be mm. able to be successful with some of our onboarding processes. So what are one or two tips that, you, as we're thinking about onboarding person into an online business, that we can think about with um, disability inclusion? Yeah, it, go, it goes back to this social model and medical model. I think, first mm -hmm. of all, you need to understand what barriers somebody might be facing. Um, and a great question that you could ask somebody is, is what are the speed humps or what are the roadblocks slowing mm -hmm. you down or stopping you performing in this in this role? Um, mm -hmm. And then and then so identify what they are and then mm -hmm. and then be proactive about trying to eliminate those those barriers so somebody might say to you well actually I'm finding it really difficult to use this system or this software mm -hmm. and then you could identify how you could put in some assistive technology or, or help modify the software to make it more usable okay and so is that so the same type of thing I guess with presentations right because when we think yeah. about network marketing we think about when you have to present the products you have to talk to people about the the products it may be yeah. just a one-on-one -on -one that a person is doing so how do we help people to really up their game in that activity is yeah. uh, when we're include doing disability inclusion yeah, it's the same question, really, because if mm -hmm. you think about presentations, um, somebody might not be able to look at slides in the mm -hmm. normal way. Um, mm -hmm. And so maybe they need to access the slides differently or earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of my clients, for example, I've been working with a client, they, they run lots of training and conferences and things like that. And they've created a, a guide to running accessible and inclusive events and training and mm -hmm. one of the things that they've got their trainers to think about is should presentation materials be provided before the event so that somebody has got time to read them digest them look mm -hmm. at them using their own assistive technologies before they actually show up to mm -hmm. the main mm -hmm. event itself so you could think about that um, providing things in different materials okay. um, so yeah there's there's those, those kind of adjustments that can be made mm -hmm. And then uh, as we move into the retention piece, what are some yep. things that we really need to, to think about when we want to retain people, especially with disabilities? Yeah, I think that's a really good question because I, th I think the first thing to do is, is, again, just keep checking in with people, regardless mm -hmm. of whether they're disabled or not, actually, right. to exactly. see what is, what is preventing them from progressing. Mm -hmm. And again, eliminate those 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 obstacles or those barriers um, mm -hmm. and there could be a whole number of reasons somebody might not have the tools to do their job fully somebody might be struggling to access the training or the skills development they need to move to the next level um, and so I think it's really about identifying what those obstacles are mm -hmm. and as a manager doing your best to remove those barriers mm -hmm. awesome so um that's that's recruitment, onboarding activity and retention. And now I want to kind of think about um, just our mindset and the, mm. the thought process. So what are some things that people need to unlearn? So what do we need to unlearn about people, either people that have disabilities or disability inclusion in general? What are some things that you think that we should unlearn? I think one of the things that we really need to challenge ourselves on are what assumptions we're making about somebody. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had this in the past with some managers that I've worked with where they see me in a wheelchair and they make assumptions about what I can or can't do, mm -hmm. which, and, and some of those assumptions turn out to be false. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to challenge our assumptions, first of all, mm -hmm. to kind of be quite in introspective and just say to myself, what, I'm, what am I assuming about this person? What, what do I think they, what, what am I assuming that they, they can or cannot do? because mm -hmm. of their disability and and is that actually true mm -hmm. and, and are my assumptions being shaped by my biases um which are mostly unconscious um and what are some of the stereotypes that i'm falling foul of mm -hmm. because of maybe how disabled people have been depicted in the media and tv mm -hmm. and films in the past mm -hmm. So um, any other things that you think we should unlearn? I think that's probably enough. To, to, okay. That's probably okay. going to keep you occupied for quite some yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> right. 
<laughs> so um, th- this has been an absolutely amazing conversation. Uh, so much. I mean, if you all have not learned anything, you just didn't want to learn anything. Because this has been <laughs> so good to me because I think that this is, again, something that we are not talking about. And we really need to bring this conversation to the forefront. So, Toby, thank you so very much for being on the Inclusive Networker podcast today. Um, is Tell me about the next big project you have coming up. How do we stay in touch with you? How do we plug in? I know everybody is going to want to make sure that they uh, connect with you after this. Yes, I'm about to write my second book. Okay. So my, my first book, which is called Inclusive Growth, basically sets out kind of seven best practices for really embedding diversity and inclusion into your organization in a sustainable way Mm -hmm. and the book went down really well and everyone was like yeah it's really great that you've got these seven best practices but how do we actually implement it in our business so Mm. over the last four years I've been working with clients and we've created a methodology for developing diversity and inclusion strategies so my second book is really based around this methodology and how you can actually maximize your impact when it comes to creating a a plan for your business Mm -hmm. so that that's what I'm working on next love it in terms of um sorry in terms of how people can just get in touch I mean LinkedIn is probably the best place to okay to start just you know connect with me on LinkedIn and drop me a message so when is the second book coming out do we have a date yet or are we getting a preview of of when it's gonna release Um, or so I'm hoping it's going to come out in the first quarter of 2024. Okay, okay. We will be looking out for that. And then tell us the name of the first one again. So the first book is called Inclusive Growth, um, and All you right. can get it on Amazon. Absolutely. Well, everybody, thank you for listening to us today on this episode of the Inclusive Networker Podcast. Again, thank you to my guest, Toby Milden. This was absolutely fabulous. Um, and we can you'll get his information in the show notes, and we will see you on the next episode of the Inclusive Networker Podcast. Bye. Uh-huh.